first century judge, Miss Frangelica Valdez. Our second century judge, Miss Michelle Gladys Our third century judge, Miss Shena Ibanez. And our shadow judge, Mr. John Carlo Martinez. Mr. Sanchez, the floor is yours. Are all of you guys doing? is we know them for their floral and citric profile. Usually we call them bergamot or jasmine. But this geisha that I'm going to serve you today is going to have an overflowing stone fruit characteristic along with raspberries and the jasmine florality. This coffee is produced by the Lamastus family who took this geisha varietal, brought it to Panama, and they grew it on their highest farm, which is actually the highest farm in all of Panama. In that condition, the geisha varietal is experiencing extreme cold and constant rainfall. So it takes meticulous picking, careful drying, and a very special process to bring out these flavors that I mentioned to you. My rooster, April Coffee, considered the produce of the Mastus family and partnered with them to roast this coffee to a 70% development. This brings out the stone fruit characteristic to its, its best. And now, I'm going to brew it for you. My goal today is to brew the purest expression of this coffee. So I'm going to be using 15 grams of coffee to a total of 240 ml of water. This ratio of 1 to 16 allows me to have the best balance of flavors and at the same time to have the correct bed height. When the bed height is about halfway through the brewer, this prevents the unwanted flavors to come through into the cup. I'm using the April Brewer and the April Filters because it's the brewer that I use at home. And I'm a home brewer, by the way. I'll be using 93 degrees water with a PPM of 80. And I'm going to do four equal pours. asking why four pours? Well, because this coffee is grown at 1,800 meters above sea level, the coffee is very dense, and so we need to have the right amount of agitation to bring out all the flavors and the aromas of this coffee. I'm pouring every 30 seconds, because now at its current resting period, this is where the aroma and the aftertaste is at its best. And then I'm going to switch to my second kettle with the same water, but lowered to 91 degrees. This declining temperature allows me to have the ideal aftertaste and also the acidity intensity that I'm looking for. this coffee to you. I can smell it from here. Can you guys? Yeah. So I'm finishing up. So I'm going to 
a total brew time of about three minutes. Because I find that the long contact time plus the coarse grind size of 720 microns grinded on the Bentwood grinder produces the sweetest and most clear cup. Now while waiting for the coffee to drain down, I would like to talk to you guys about the aroma descriptors. So you will be finding just two, but very clear. Raspberries and apricot. When I serve these pictures to you, I will be asking you to take gentle breaths as you swirl it seven times, lift it up to your nose, and enjoy. It's not something that we can just come up in a lab 
It's not something we can just stumble upon by accident. It is a gift of the earth from the people who live in it. I'm so glad that I can serve this coffee to you. Time. Benedict Thomas.